I don't miss the subways or the angry cab drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the restaurants, though. Welcome to the Putback, presented by 888 Sport. Bet $20 on either the Knicks or the Nets and get $88 in free bets by using the promo code SNY88. I'm Ian Begley here with Chris Williamson. Chris, what do we have for the baseline this week? Oh, yeah, and the Knicks have, well, they will have a new face in the point guard room in Luca Vildoza. Uh, he's one of the more exciting players from Europe. So what can you tell us about that situation? Right, so the Knicks were under the salary floor, which is the minimum amount that a team can, has to spend in the season. If a team doesn't spend that money, it gets divided up among the players on the roster. So one thing that this deal did is it got the Knicks over the salary cap floor. And also they bring in a young guard who is well regarded in Europe as a playmaker. And he will be somebody who is not gonna be here this year, as you mentioned, but he's gonna be keeping, the Knicks are gonna keep tabs on him in the off season. Uh, maybe he comes to training camp, likely comes to training camp next year. And they just continue to evaluate him for a potential uh, rotation spot but you look at Tom Thibodeau's rotation I mean it's hard to crack that rotation so I think that's worth noting when we talk about Vildoza but they will keep an eye on him they do like him they liked him enough to give him a four-year deal last three years not guaranteed this week's guest is Vincent Goodwill a senior NBA writer for Yahoo Sports if this were two years ago this were maybe 2018 I would have said, okay, I'm really surprised that Derrick Rose has acclimated himself to this game in this way. This incarnation of Derrick Rose has understood that, hey, this is a spread out league. I don't have to try as hard to get the same shots that I got five or six years ago when I was relying on my body. I just see a player who's not just comfortable on the floor, but comfortable in his own skin comfortable with where he's been, comfortable with the different stages that he's been in in his life and in his NBA life. Are you at all like surprised, not not just by like the basketball, but just that kind of he has allowed himself to, to adapt or did you see that coming even when you were covering him when he was younger? What I saw in him was, at least as I got to know him towards the end of it, it was like, okay, this is a dude that knows how to adapt. And it all goes back to his childhood and growing up in Chicago and really knowing how to figure it out. Like sometimes we don't give guys credit for being able to figure it out. We just look at guys and say, this is the way he's always been. He's not going to change, you know, that type of thing. And then we say, oh, he's going to be out of the league in three years or whatever it was. And then he did have that stint where, you know, Utah did release him and he was sitting out, you know, for a stretch of time. But could I say that I saw all of this six years later? No, just because of everything that had happened to his body, his knees and everything, like you just didn't know. You thought he was going to be maybe another Brandon Roy or Penny Hardaway. He's kind of turned himself into that Grant Hill back end of his career. When Grant Hill was in Phoenix on a contender playing a role as opposed to being a franchise player. I think Derrick Rose has found his niche in New York with this franchise, and I just think he's comfortable, and I would not be surprised if he comes back on some sort of not one-year contract, but maybe, you know, a two-year contract or three-year contract just because he feels so comfortable there, and I believe that the people in New York, as far as the Knicks organization, feels that comfortable with him. I mean, you can take it to the bank that the Knicks will certainly have interest in bringing Derrick Rose back because Tom Thibodeau is the coach, and wherever Thibodeau goes, he's going to want Derrick Rose with him, but it's not just Thibodeau. I mean, you mentioned Vincent. Other people in this organization really have a strong appreciation for what Derrick Rose has brought on the court, impacting the Knicks win-loss record, but also off the court as a mentor to some of these young guys. So, you know, I think other teams, I'm sure other teams will have interest in Rose in the offseason, but I think the Knicks will be right there, and I don't think they would hesitate to offer him more than one year. The last thing for me, listen, Derrick Rose, I, I covered him for one year in New York, and now he's back, and we're doing Zoom calls, so I don't see him in the locker room or anything like that. But in that brief time period, he's just one of the nicest, like, most approachable superstars that I've come across, not in just the NBA, but baseball, NFL, and so many people around the league have a Derrick Rose story about how he's just so down to earth. So it's just, uh, just remarkable to me, you know, how we've seen him not only on the court transform, but just stay so grounded day to day when he's dealing with people. 
part of the the culture change has but been because of Tom Thibodeau and what he's done, especially from the defensive side of the ball. How do you think he's adjusted his coaching style in 2021? I think it's more or less listening a little bit more. And if you show an ability to relate to guys, to listen to them, they'll go to war for you. Like the, the, the whole thing about guys not wanting to play hard for certain coaches and things like that. I think that was a little bit unfair. Nobody wins in Minnesota. Like, let's be, let, let's say that again. <laughs> Nobody wins in Minnesota, <laughs> you know? So to put that solely on him, I think is a little bit unfair. I think what you, what you saw was someone who should not have been in a president of basketball operations uh, type of role, but someone who's well equipped to be a head coach and to say that the game passed him by like I feel like he's cut from that Bill Parcells um, Bill Belichick sort of cloth that New York edgy sort of cloth that you guys have where they tend to they tend to slowly adapt to the new surroundings around them but they still keep the core like Parcells always had his guys Tom Thibodeau always has his guys whether it's Derrick Rose or Todd Gibson guys who can preach the gospel of tips in the locker room so it doesn't always have to come from him and I just think he's kind of lightened up a little bit while still demanding a lot from those guys the Knicks play 72 regular season playoff games while everybody else plays 72 regular season games really good point Vince you mentioned Derrick Rose Tash Gibson they both referenced exactly what you're saying that he's a little bit more open to kind of communicating with guys especially the young guys this year and, and he's talked about how that was a big adjustment for him when he was out of the league after Minnesota coming back to New York. He did an interview, I think, with Stephen A. Smith last week where he said, you have to be able to connect with guys. I'm getting older, the players are getting younger, but it's so important to find a way to connect. He's done a pretty good job connecting with this Knicks group. You're seeing the results on the court, but also the way they talk about their coach uh, after the wins and the loss. I, and I think guys know what Tibbs' reputation was coming in. Once you get guys like Julius Randle to buy in and he starts seeing the results and those other players start seeing the results, it's easier to buy in. Like, you got to think, this was kind of a, not a rocky start, but this wasn't a great start from this team. They've come on over the past month or so, not because it took a long time for players to buy in, but sometimes it just takes a little longer for this thing to gel and work out. I'd rather it be this way if I'm a Knicks fan and I'm a Knicks player, then it'd be a strong start and you sputter to the finish line. I'd rather you be playing your best basketball headed into May as opposed to in October and November. There is no relax, champ. No relax when I'm on Twitter. I'm on 10 until the second I close the app. You relax. Let's move over to the other team in New York, the Brooklyn Nets, who, despite you know their great success, are not the, the headline story, especially in New York, but they've lost four of their last five games, including two straight in Milwaukee. How concerning is that slide to you? The how is always more concerning than the actual loss of games. Because when you're late in the season and you're waiting on James Harden to come back, and, I, and, I, and I'm not sure if I would play him before that, just because if that hamstring pops again, he's done. And you can see where the team really misses him. It always feels a little bit more awkward when it's KD and Kyrie leading the show compared to James and Kyrie, compared to James and KD, because you need some level of connection there. Yeah, the idea that we are in the last week of the regular season and James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving have only played, I think, seven games together. But what do you think, Vince, about the chemistry idea. Do you think they'll be able to build this chemistry on the fly? Kind of, how do you think Steve Nash should handle that? Uh, do you think the chemistry is just not gonna be there because of the way this regular season is played out? It can be there. It can develop in a certain way. It's not gonna be at the optimum strength, but that where chemistry doesn't happen is where talents can sort of come in and bridge that gap. The mm -hmm. problem is for me, maybe you can develop that in the first round if you get a favorable matchup on the play-in, if you wind up you know, getting the Indiana Pacers or the Charlotte Hornets, not necessarily great teams that can match your talent. You know, and that's even if you're in the second seed because you know they could very well go from two to three, you know, depending on what happens in this in this last week. So you can develop it a little bit, but it, it would have to be in the first round. And then by the second round, if you're playing the Milwaukee Bucks and they're at full strength and they know who they are, 
and you're still trying to play with your Legos, to me, that's almost too much to ask unless your talent is simply that great and you're asking Kevin Durant to not only score 40 points, but guard Giannis for long stretches of time. Like to me, I have a lot more questions now that we're coming to the end of the regular season, not not just because of their losing games, but just because of what I'm seeing, where you're asking a player who can be the best player in basketball to do literally everything, score 40 if you got to, and be a high level defender coming off of the type of injury that you've had and develop chemistry with your two other co-stars. I think that's asking a little bit too much and I'm not sure they have an alternative. For Vincent and Chris, I'm Ian. That'll do it for this week's episode of The Putback presented by 888 Sport. We'll see you next week. Which team do you most want to face in the first round? That's the subject of this week's SNY Fan Choice presented by 888 Sport. Bet $20 on the next Ornets and get $88 in free bets with promo code SNY88.